How important is the amount of light in the scene in making the rendering realistic? What does white balance help us? To answer these questions, we must go to the camera settings in the Chaos Vantage software. In this video, exposure options and white balance are discussed. So let's go and start our video real quick. Hello, welcome to MimViz. Let's go to Chaos Vantage software. We want to talk about exposure mode. Exposure generally means the amount of light entering our scene. We call it exposure, but let's go and check its options. Since exposure is set to noun in our scene, the only way to control exposure is to use exposure bias in the camera section. By changing it, we can control the amount of light that comes into the scene. But the next mode is the physical mode. In this case, the exposure formula works just like in the real world of photography. If you want to look more precisely and scientifically at exposure, it's better to use this mode. In the photo cameras, with three factors, you can control the amount of exposure in the photo. An ISO parameter. F number shutter speed. By activating the physical mode for exposure mode, these three options will be activated for us. But what is ISO? The amount of sensitivity of the lens sensor to the light. By changing this option, we can only control the amount of light in our final image. But F number it controls the size of the aperture of the lens. To understand it better, let's look at this image. As you can see here, Although the aperture has a larger size, the larger the aperture, more light passes through it. Therefore, we will have a brighter image. You can in photography when you are in the sun and there is a lot of light in the environment, increase your F number so that the aperture has a smaller size. Note that the number F is determined in the denominator. For example, the F number of 8. In comparison, the F number of 2 is smaller. Therefore, the aperture is more closed in the f8, and less light passes through it. Photographers use a large aperture in the dark and low light. For example, an f number of 1.4 is used. You can see the changes in the scene, but the shutter speed acts like a curtain against the light and controls the amount of light entering the sensor. For example, this curtain can be removed in one-tenth of a second. At this time, light enters the sensor, then the curtain is closed to control the amount of incoming light. Otherwise, too much light will cause the final image to be overexposed, or even too much light will damage the camera sensor. So don't forget that the sensor needs a certain amount of light in the environment to produce a standard image. You can also watch the shutter speed effect in this video. As you can see, the value of shutter speed determines the speed of movement of this curtain. Therefore, the higher the number, the less light enters our sensor. And the lower the number, the more light passes through it. And our picture will be clearer. These three parameters form the light triangle in photography. If you have actually done photography in the real world, I recommend using the physical option for exposure mode. Otherwise, I recommend using the value option. But before that, let me add two points. Your familiarity with shutter speed and F number parameters can help you more in the future because the amount of F number can affect the depth of field and the amount of shutter speed can also affect the motion blur. So. I suggest you get familiar with these parameters. But now, let's set exposure mode on the value mode. In this mode, the exposure value parameter will be added to our settings. In the value mode, the F number can change, but it does not affect our scene. However, if you increase the exposure value, the scene's exposure decreases. And with its amount of decrease, you can make your own scene brighter. 
This is the simplest and fastest way to control the exposure of the scene. So, if you don't want to get involved with physical mode parameters, go to this mode. I use this option most of the time. But the next option in the camera option is white balance, which actually controls the white color in the scene. The point is that you can use the white balance option if set the exposure mode to value or physical. Otherwise, you don't have the white balance option. But when we click on white balance, this window opens, which has different parameters for choosing the color of the scene. But here, what color should we choose? In this window, Whatever color is selected, that color will be removed from our scene. For example, if I choose an orange color here, the orange color is removed from my scene. Or if I choose blue, the effect of blue color on my scene decreases. But why is it called white balance? By using this parameter, we can set the color balance on the scene so that the white color is really white. But don't forget, our goal is to reach a white balance. So in the sunset scene, we should not remove the orange color completely. To understand this better, I will enter a render of this scene into Photoshop. Now using the color picker tool, I can adjust the white color of the wall. As you can see, the R, G, and B sections have different numbers. And these numbers have a lot of differences with each other. So we should try to reduce the difference between these numbers to create a white balance in the scene. Note that this white color, with attention to the light and shadows, can vary from white to gray. So. Our view of white is not pure white. As you can see, the amount of red parameter in this scene is very different from the amount of blue and green. So let's go back to the scene and use the white balance option to solve the problem in the white balance window. One color from the red spectrum is enough and choose close to the color we want. If I want to work more precisely, I can set the range option to be 0, 255, so that my number, like Photoshop parameters, can change. Now I can, with the attention to the number that I had in Photoshop, specify the number of parameters. As you can see, the effect of the orange color in my scene decreases. Now, if I go back to Photoshop, I see that the color balance between RGB has been created. This causes we have a professional render. In the white balance window, you can also use the natural presets to reach the color theme you want. Don't forget, the difference between a professional 3D artist and an amateur 3D artist is that a professional artist is familiar with all the tips and settings of the software. So to become a professional, you need to be familiar with all the settings. We are here to help you along the way. So be with us and subscribe to our channel and comment your opinion about this video so that we can continue with more energy. In the previous video, we talked about some of the camera options such as focal lens and field of view. If you haven't seen it yet, click on the link above. Thank you for being with us. Until the next video, goodbye.